Hello and welcome to a very, very special evening. I'm Jennifer Beck and I am so pleased that you are joining us for the Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County annual fundraising event. Perhaps you've attended the event in the past at the Civic Center. What an awesome event Heartbeat has put on for so many years. But unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, it wasn't able to happen as an in-person event this year. When TV44 heard that that could be the plight, we wanted to make sure we could do whatever was necessary to make sure that Heartbeat still had their annual fundraiser. And that's what's happening tonight. So stick tight. We ask that you stick with us for the next hour because we have some great things planned for you to experience. We also encourage you perhaps to text or call a friend. Even if they can't watch TV44, they can watch this event on the live stream, which can be found at heartbeatoflima.org forward slash banquet. Now I would like to introduce to you our MC for the evening, a well-known friend of Heartbeat of this community and a longtime friend of mine. Here is Mr. Bob Alm. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer did a fantastic job trying to remind me where to look toward the cameras tonight, but uh, I read Braille, so please excuse my lack of eye contact uh, this evening. It is my honor to serve as Master of Ceremonies for the next hour program about Heartbeat. As Jennifer mentioned, for the past 11 years, the events have drawn increasingly large crowds to the Civic Center. Last year, over 500 people donated as they enjoyed steak and music, and it was a wonderful evening. But because of COVID-19, we are gracious for the support of TV44 to be able to host this event both on air and online tonight. For 47 years, Heartbeat has worked to make a difference in the lives of women, preborn babies, and their families. It wouldn't be possible without the support of donors, of staff, of Heartbeat volunteers, and people like you. In the coming hour, you're going to hear about the work that Heartbeat does in our community from some people who are committed to life and protecting this most precious gift from God. As we begin tonight, I'd like to recognize Heartbeat Trustee Board members who may be here this evening. Uh, Brian Williams, Brenda Keller, Jan Acero, Natalie Gallagher, Dave Hawker, Dave Rufner, Teresa Stolle, and Tom Awe. Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County needs your financial support this evening perhaps like no other time in its history. Doing this is an extremely easy thing to do. Right now, there are volunteers here at the TV44 studio. You can reach them with a donation or pledge at 419-339-4444. You can make a pledge or donation there. You can make a pledge or donation by calling Heartbeat of Lima any Monday through Thursday at 419-222-7945. You can send a text message if you can't stay away from your smartphone at 419-216-2526 with the words Give Lima, then the dollar amount you'd like to donate. Or you can visit heartbeatoflima.org or respond to the pledge card that over 1,200 of you received in the mail. In addition to your financial contributions, Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County needs your prayers like never before. To lead us in prayer this evening, Ben Anderson from the Lima Baptist Temple. Ben? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for tonight, and I want to pray a special blessing over this evening that you would bring people to watch this on TV 44 and on social media and on the website in ways that we cannot even imagine. And Father, we are so thankful for how you're working through Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County. We're thankful for Patty and her team and the board and trustees. We're thankful for 
Uh, the partners that donate items we're thankful for our financial partners and father we pray tonight that you would bring new partners whether it's in donations or financially to heartbeat of lima so that they can continue to make an impact not only on the lima community but on northwest ohio father we thank you and we praise you for it all in your name amen Thank you, Brian. Before the evening is through, I will have ingrained in your mind the easy to use phone number to make a donation to Heartbeat, the easiest of them all, 419-339-4444. I'd like to introduce Brian Williams, the board president of Heartbeat of Lima. Brian. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome, sir. Good seeing you, man seeing you. Thanks for everything you do. You're welcome. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees for Heartbeat of Lima, I would like to thank everyone for attending this evening, both in person and at home. We would especially like to extend our appreciation to WTLW for producing this live event for Heartbeat of Lima. It is my honor to present the 2020 Life Leadership Award. The Life Leadership Award is given to individuals who have shown outstanding leadership in protecting the unborn and in helping babies and women in need. In the past seven months, we've seen signs reading, Heroes Work Here. Heartbeat of Lima has heroes of its own. When clients come to our offices, they're often very distraught and abortion-minded. Heartbeat's heroes are truly the nurses that are on the front lines providing compassionate care to these women. When Heartbeat began to offer free ultrasounds in 2011, two nurses voluntarily underwent extensive training in providing limited ultrasounds. They have faithfully given their time to provide this valuable service ever since. In addition, we are blessed with two other nurses who meet weekly with clients in need of pregnancy testing. These nurses have given many women hope who felt hopeless and through their dedication they have saved many lives the 2020 life leadership award is being presented to four recipients they are ann cox joyce bus mary lou butorek and mary ann schrader congratulations ladies please step forward much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Anne. Thank you very much, Mary Lou. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you very much, Mary Lou. Appreciate it. Thanks for everything Thank you do, you. Joyce. Thank you. Appreciate it. I didn't see the cue. What can I say? <laughs> it is one thing to say that you are pro-life. It is quite another to put your words into action. Our next speaker has done that for as long as I've known her. She is Patty Kennedy. I have described Patty in the past as being kind of like that ever-ready bunny. She just never stops going and going and going when it comes to heartbeat. Despite some medical challenges of her own, she shares her time and her talent to support the preborn, their mothers, and their families, with an enthusiasm that's extremely contagious. Patty's biggest challenge, other than getting lost on the way to the studio tonight because she was so excited to be here on time, is to keep her remarks as short as they're supposed to be. Let's see how she does tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Patty Kennedy. Thank you, Bob. 
I would like to thank everyone that is joining us this evening. For those of you who are not familiar with Heartbeat of Lima, we are, a we are a pregnancy care center whose doors opened in 1973 in direct response to Roe versus Wade to provide hope, education, and resources to women who were experiencing an unplanned pregnancy. 47 years later, we stand strong to help those women and preborn babies that are here today. We currently have three offices. Two of the offices are in the Lima area, and one of them is Ottawa. We provide pregnancy testing, parenting classes, material aid, and we have a post-abortion recovery program. Our satellite office downtown provides the pregnancy testing. As Brian just mentioned, that is a very, very valuable resource to us and our nurses we, we could not do any of it without the nurses that Brian just, just um, awarded because they've been outstanding. Many times we see young women and men who are scared and worried. They don't know which way to turn with their pregnancy. Our nurses are able to confirm the pregnancy for them and provide a limited ultrasound, which will identify that the baby is developing in the uterus. They are able to get accurate measurements of the baby's heart rate and the gestational age of the baby. Many times, as soon as the parent sees that tiniest little heartbeat, they instantly realize that they are looking at their preborn baby and that fear is replaced with hope. We have seen many lives saved by the ultrasounds and changed by the ultrasounds. We are encouraging our clients on a daily basis to um, consider parenting their children or, or adoption. If they choose adoption, we have attorneys that work with them continuously throughout the process, and we as heart, our Heartbeat volunteers and employees are there to support them throughout that process also. Um, adoption is one of the most loving choices that are out there and one of the most difficult choices for, for a woman, woman to go through. Currently, we have two amazing birth mothers that are in the process of an adoption. Um, we, I mentioned a little bit, we do have the HEART program, which is healing the effects of abortion-related trauma, and that's a very important program for any woman who may have experienced an abortion in the past and, and is looking for a healing program. Please contact our office if that is the situation. If a client chooses to parent their child, we work with them extensively from pregnancy through age three of their child. We have three different programs, including our Cheers Charts program, a fatherhood program, and Bright Course, which, which has recently been a new option for us in online classes that we've, we have um, had many of our women do over the course of COVID. It's been a great opportunity to be able to reach out to them through the internet. These programs exist to help these families strengthen and develop their strong parenting and life skills in turn providing a healthier and safer home environment for their families and their children. Through the programs, our clients earn points and they're able to shop in a boutique that we have and get much needed items for their children. So it helps them in many different ways with the education as well as, as the items that they are receiving. So, and in, in our education is a very strong point that we have and we, ha we, we would like to share a little video of one of our clients um, a past client that we had. So if we can go ahead and... Last January, actually, found out I was pregnant. No intention of ever getting pregnant that, that age. I was 19. I knew from then on, I was like, oh no, what do I do? Like, my life's over. My parents are going to hate me. So I knew I had to face what was next. I had to tell my, I had to tell my parents, and I knew I was going to be a single mom. And I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I knew I had to do what I had to do for me and that baby at that time. They did a pregnancy test just to clarify that I was for sure pregnant, and turns out I was. I was about seven weeks pregnant, and they, from then on, we set up. Uh, appointment to do an ultrasound and did an ultrasound, heard the baby, saw the baby, it was my first actual ultrasound and in that moment I was like, there's like, there's life inside me, like, it, how can this be possible, like how, 
and all the, and just so many thoughts are going through my mind and my mom's like it's gonna be okay and in those in that moment I was like it's gonna be okay okay we're gonna get through this so and then heartbeat from then on just I started doing the chairs parts and that's been amazing Terrace Charts is a one-on-one. -on -one. You you meet with a person individually every two weeks, and in that time you have um, a video play. You get to talk. You get to um, you have some homework. You just learn about what happens from beginning to end, like every milestone of the child, everything that happens in birth, and just really opened my eyes because half the stuff I didn't even know was like whoa, like I didn't even know it existed and it just, it honestly helped me become a better mom, stronger person. I love that one-on-one -on -one time to actually just talk to someone about what's on my mind, what am I thinking, just the help, just the guidance and just for someone to actually hear me and be there for me is just literally what has gotten me through this entire time being a single mom. I look at it now, if I didn't have my son, I wouldn't be here and I probably would be down a really bad path. So for me, I feel like this whole thing was a God thing to have found heartbeat to help me to keep me going and not give up. I graduated in spring from Rhodes from the early childhood education department and I hope to become a teacher and then I hope, maybe down the line, that God has a guy out there for me and to get married, have more kids, and just live life like whatever God has planned for me, I guess. Just living life right now with me and my son and enjoying it. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite Auburn Cox to step forward. Thank you, Patty. Well, I have not seen that video in two years, so that was very nice to recap. Um, in that video, I was actually a waitress, and as I stated, I graduated college. Um, I am now a teacher at Shawnee Weekday Preschool, and I teach the five-year-olds. Um, I recently, I got engaged last year on Christmas Eve, so I did find a guy, one that I never thought I would. <laughs> especially one to love me and my son. Uh, we just recently got married back in June. Um, my husband is now going to adopt Lanson. Um, never thought my son would have a father, the one that he does. Uh, my husband loves John and me so much more than I could ever imagine. And I hope and pray that all of these women a heartbeat turn out to find a man like I have. Heartbeat has helped me in so many ways and I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart, seriously. Because if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be standing here today. Um, my son was two Back two years ago during that video, and Tuesday he turns four. So it's going to be a great day for him turning the big four. Um, I also want to thank you to Teresa Stolly. She was my one-on-one -on -one person during Cherished Hearts. Um, without her, I wouldn't have made it this far. Um, and again, Heartbeat, thank you because you guys have led to where I am now. You guys have helped me. You guys were there when I graduated college. You guys were there when I met John, my husband. You guys were there when I got my new job. Um, I have been out a year from Heartbeat, and I hope one day I can actually go back in and start serving and helping some of these women to be a better person and to strive to be a great mom and no matter what life throws at you, you're going to be okay. So thank you, Heartbeat. Thank you all for supporting Heartbeat of Lima.
it has changed my life for the better. Thank you. That's going to end badly before this night is over. But you, you do understand that, right? You don't make up a story like that. You don't script a story like that. That is from the heart, from someone who has seen firsthand what heartbeat does, what heartbeat can do. Particularly, if you'll dig a little deep this evening to make a donation to support their work. Doing so is extremely easy. All you have to do is call the volunteers who are waiting outside for the phone to ring at WTLW at 419-339-4444. You can call Heartbeat of Lima Monday through Thursday in case you have to get permission from your husband or wife to spend the money and you have to wait till tomorrow at 419-222-7945. Perhaps the easiest way of all is to text the amount you'd like to donate along with the words give Lima at 419-226-2526. And if you're liking the famous old internet, just go online at heartbeatoflima.org. So many ways to give, so many important ways that you can contribute. I'd like to introduce tonight Ann Cox, who's one of the ultrasound nurses who is involved in Heartbeat of Lima. She has information, I'm told, about the abortion, the abortion pill rescue network. And Good evening. A few months ago, I took on a new role. I became a consultant with the Abortion Pill Rescue Network's healthcare team. Our consultants are dedicated to the idea that every woman deserves to know the whole truth about abortion including facts about her unborn child and, and the choices that she can make about her pregnancy every step of the way. Today in the U.S., chemical abortions account for more than a third of all the abortions performed. A chemical abortion begins when a woman takes mifepristone or RU486. This drug blocks the cell receptors in her body from taking up the hormone progesterone. Progesterone is absolutely necessary to sustain pregnancy. The abortion is completed when 24 hours later she takes a second drug called misoprostol. That drug causes uterine contractions and the baby is expelled. This combination of drugs terminates pregnancy 97% of the time. However, when a woman feels regret after taking that first medication, abortion pill reversal is one choice available to her. No woman should feel forced that she, to complete an abortion that she now regrets. One of our main goals is to ensure that she has the opportunity to choose life, even at this point. Abortion pill reversal, or APR, is the protocol used to reverse the effects of a chemical abortion. It involves emergency, ongoing doses of progesterone to counteract the effects of that first abortion medication. Progesterone is an FDA-approved drug which is has been prescribed to pregnant women for decades to prevent miscarriage and preterm birth. APR is a cutting-edge application of a time-tested FDA-approved treatment. A case study in 2018 by Delgado revealed that the success rate of reversal is 64 to 68 percent, with no higher incidence of birth defects than that of the general population. Our statistics now show that more than a thousand women have successfully stopped their abortions and saved their children through the Abortion Pill Rescue Network. Heartbeat International has served more than four million pregnant women through their option line, which is available to them 24 seven. And now this contact center routes more than 150 calls a month from women who regret their abortions to our healthcare team. Our consultants can, can connect that client to one of over 700 medical providers across the country who initiate the reversal protocol. We are receiving calls from across the U.S. and we're serving an increasing number of international callers as well. Listen to what some of our clients have shared about their reversal experience. Cachet shared, 
Not following through with the abortion pill has been a tremendous blessing. My little girl is the joy of my life, and I truly don't know what I would do without her. Elizabeth shared, there's help out there for women who are confused and feel lonely. For me, the help the Pregnancy Center has given me is the best. I didn't feel alone, and I knew if I had a question, I wouldn't hesitate to call them. Some of our clients tell us that this has been a spiritually significant moment as well, the beginning of a deeper walk with God. Indeed, when anyone is convicted of a wrong choice and takes steps to correct that wrong in obedience to God, that is a miraculous moment. Now, the tools of my trade are technological, my computer and my phone. My colleagues and I are the voice on the other end of a phone line, and we have the information that a client needs to make a critical choice. We can connect her to a medical provider who can initiate the APR protocol. But when she chooses life, a choice that felt impossible to her just a few hours before, she faces an enormous challenge ahead. She needs to be connected to a pregnancy help center locally where she can access mentoring and counseling, referrals and physical items like food, diapers and clothing. And for those women who attempt reversal and then experience a pregnancy loss, our local centers provide the post-abortion counseling so that they need not grieve that loss alone. It is critical that our local centers, like Heartbeat, have a solid financial base through caring and generous donors so that they are open and available to meet the ongoing needs of these women. It is the staff and the volunteers at the thousands of centers across the U.S. and around the world who provide the human connection, the encouraging words, and the helping hands to these women as they continue their pregnancies and begin their journey into parenting. I've gained a newfound appreciation for the multitude of dedicated staff, medical professionals, volunteers, and donors that it takes to operate this network. And I urge you to do all you can do to keep these centers open and accessible, serving courageous women and affirming the God-given gift of life. Thank you. Getting a little braver. Thank you, Anne, for a very nice testimony. You've heard mentioned a couple of times the work that uh, Heartbeat does in both Lima and in Putnam County. And I know it might often be thought that their services are confined to Lima, but as you have been hearing, there is also a lot of work done for our friends in Putnam County. And I would encourage you as well to do what you can to dig a little deep this evening to make a donation to continue the work of Heartbeat. Easiest way, once again, is to call us right now at 419-339-4444. There are a number of other donation opportunities that I'll pass along again shortly. But just remember the number and use it now, 419-339-4444. Our guest speaker comes to us tonight originally from Detroit, but he has turned into an Ohioan. Wise choice. Mike Spencer considered himself a, a pro-choice kind of guy until he was confronted with the reality of abortion in his 20s. Today, this former church pastor uses his voice for the preborn and for their families, helping out, presenting his mission to groups like Heartbeat. He and his wife, Barb, have five children, including a daughter they adopted from Guatemala, which would seem like a full-time job enough to me. But Mike Spencer has taken the time to travel from Salina tonight to speak to us at our revised 2020 Heartbeat program. Mike Spencer, thank you. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> it is a pleasure to be with you this evening, and I'm so glad that you have invested your evening in Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County. <clears throat> Few individuals have impacted the course of history as much as William Wilberforce. Described by one author as the Hercules of abolition, it was said that good, good causes stuck to him like pins to a magnet. And of course, the cause for which he is most known was his personal war against the British slave trade. Wilberforce had become Britain's conscience, or more accurately, Britain's elbow, because he refused to be silenced and he refused to go away. For two decades, William Wilberforce hammered away relentlessly 
at the against, against the injustice of slavery and the cruelty of slavery as an affront to divine authority and a stain on the people of Britain, a stain that he believed needed to be scrubbed from the face of the earth. On December 15th, 1795, William Wilberforce stood before Parliament and declared, quote, now is the time, the very time, to show our true principles by stopping a practice which violates all the real rights of human nature. Twelve years later, on February 23rd of 1807, 20 years now after William Wilberforce began this crusade, he was awarded or rewarded with victory. After a debate lasting 10 hours, Parliament abolished the Atlantic slave trade by an overwhelming vote of 283 to 16. Today in England and here in the United States and throughout most of the world, slavery and racial discrimination are condemned in the strongest possible terms. Wilberforce once said this, quote, in the scriptures, no national crime is condemned so frequently and few so strongly as oppression and cruelty and the not using our best endeavors to deliver our fellow creatures from them. This is a good reminder for us in 2020 because the purveyors of bigotry never sleep. William Wilberforce's battle is now our battle. The bigotry remains. Only the targets of this bigotry have changed. Tonight, we have gathered around our homes, around our TV sets, and our computer screens to celebrate and to support Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County, a pregnancy resource center on the front lines of the defining battle of our day today, and that is the battle for life. It is a joy to address you and to be with you this evening. I am grateful for Patty and for her team and their relentless determination to give hope to the hopeless and voice to the voiceless in Lima and Putnam County and beyond. I want to speak with you briefly this evening about the evil of abortion, about the grace of God for those who have had them, and about the power of your influence in this community through this ministry. Let me start by talking about the evil injustice of abortion. It is indisputable that abortion ends the life of a human being. The consensus of human embryologists is that from the moment of conception or fertilization, we have a distinct living and whole human being with a unique DNA separate from its mother's or father's, with a blood type, a race, and a gender that were all potentially different than its mother's. Now this fact is not seriously debated today in academic circles. From day one, uh, using you now as a working illustration, you began metabolizing food for energy, growing through cellular reproduction, and responding to stimuli. These are the things that define living organisms, and each one of those things were present in you at that earliest single cell zygote stage. Since conception, you've changed in a myriad of ways. But one thing has remained the same, and that is your identity. In other words, you are the same person now as you were then. All kinds of things about you have changed, but you are the same person. We often hear um, uh, confusion about uh, the unborn child at the earlier stage of development. They, were, they are often referred to, and perhaps even you've done this, have referred to the unborn child at that earlier stage as a fertilized egg. In the science of human embryology, there actually is no such thing as a fertilized egg. Uh, there is a, a such thing as a fertilized egg, but it doesn't describe you at any stage of your development because once sperm-egg fusion takes place, the egg has literally died to itself, the sperm has died to itself, and they have given their constituents over to a new entity, namely a little human being, in this case you, a little boy or a little girl. I like how Randy Alcorn says it. He says, something, something um, that is non-human doesn't become human by getting older and bigger. Whatever is human is human from the beginning. And he's exactly right. In other words, we didn't start out as this weird fertilized egg, alien, mutated kind of a being, and over nine months of gestation, we, we transformed into a human baby. That's not how it begins. We started out as a whole human being, an undeveloped and an immature, but a genetically whole human being, and we changed, and we continue to change now even as adults, according to and within the confines of our nature, but our nature never changes. As has been done in other genocidal campaigns throughout history, abortion supporters divorce humanness from personhood. They argue that only certain human beings matter, that only certain human beings should be accorded personhood status or respect, and only if they measure up to some standard or test that the powerful establish for the weak, things like measurable brain activity, heartbeat, wantedness, normalcy, sentience, self-awareness, and these kinds of things. There are many of these. 
One thing to note is that they don't agree. There's no consensus. And this kind of an approach to valuing and viewing human beings destroys the foundation for human dignity and for human equality. The minute you divide the room or the womb based on subjectively chosen, arbitrarily chosen standards to determine who lives and who dies, you have effectively destroyed the foundation for human equality. There are only four differences between the adult you are today and the embryo that you once were. And not one of these four differences justifies killing you at any stage of your development. Just remember this, the acronym SLED, S-L-E-D. The S stands for size, the L stands for level of development, the E stands for environment or location, and the D stands for degree of dependency. Those are the only four differences between the adult you are today and the embryo you once were. And not one of these differences justifies killing you at any stage of your development. I like how Clinton Wilcox of Life Training Institute says it. He says, the question of who counts as a human being is a simple one to answer. It only becomes complex if you want to justify killing people. And he's right. But we believe, as pro-lifers, that every human being matters. That at, at every stage of development, black, white, rich, poor, Jew, Gentile, born, and unborn, we are not instrumentally valuable as human beings, but we are intrinsically valuable. In other words, we are human beings, not human doings. Our value is not something that comes to us based on some thing that we're able to do or some accomplishment we're able to fulfill. We are more than our parts and more than our functions. Something else defines us. We have an internal essence or nature about us. We are God's image bearers with inestimable moral worth. And our value came to be when we came to be. And we didn't come to be at birth. We came to be at fertilization or at conception. This view, the pro-life view, is the truly tolerant and inclusive view. For all the talk we hear from the other side about us being the, the uh, intolerant ones, the reality is, is that this view provides the only unshakable foundation for human equality. Because again, we say that every human being matters. And it has nothing to do with what they can do or how they contribute to society. They matter because they are God's image bearers, created in his image. This provides the only unshakable foundation for human equality. Abortion, conversely, is the great dehumanizer. Consider the name calling of abortion supporters who for decades have downgraded the unborn with cunning words in order to justify aborting them. Words like blob of tissue, products of conception, mass of unwanted cells, medical waste, and some even referring to little girls and boys created in God's image as parasites. Abortion is barbaric. It is the intentional and unjust killing of innocent human beings at their most vulnerable stage of development in the most barbaric manner imaginable. I, as Bob introduced me, he shared that I had been a pastor for many years. And when I pastored a church in Fort Wayne, Back in 1991, my wife Barb and I, at that time, through our involvement in the pro-life community, held in our hands a little black baby girl, a little African-American baby girl, who had been aborted at about six months of gestation through a saline solution abortion, which means that her body was still perfectly intact, but it had been discarded in a dumpster behind an abortion clinic in Detroit, Michigan. And my wife and I held that beautiful, beautiful little girl in our hands. She filled my hand, but she was lifeless because she was sacrificed in the name of choice by legalized abortion in America. It is one thing to support abortion. It is, another thing, it, is, it is another thing to know what you're supporting when you support it. It is one thing to, to spew a lot of the, the sloganeering and a lot of the rhetoric we hear from those on the other side, my body, my choice, don't like abortion, don't have one. Um, every child a wanted child and so many other slogans like that. But when you hold in your hand a lifeless little girl a lifeless little girl whose body was killed, who was killed because of abortion, all of a sudden, all of that sloganeering and all of that rhetoric disintegrates under the weight of a lifeless child. But it's not just children that abortion dehumanizes. Abortion also dehumanizes women. It displaces the God-given maternal instinct, pitting mothers against their own offspring and transforming the womb into a bloody battlefield. Abortion for a long time now, for many decades, has been slickly marketed by the, by the feminist movement and by the abortion industry as empowerment for women. Ironically, the movement that claims to champion equality for women views women as, as inherently incomplete or lacking in something that they think needs to be shored up before they are equal to men. This, they argue, can only be accomplished by granting the mothers 
the power to impose lethal force against their own unborn children, leaving scores of these women broken and with regret. No, abortion does not empower women, it enslaves them. Abortion also dehumanizes men. Legalized abortion has fundamentally stripped good and responsible fathers the right to protect and to provide for the children that they helped create. They are in fact denied all legal rights as fathers in our land today. Abortion also attacks male leadership in the home, further reducing godless men to moral Houdinis, escape artists, by providing cover for those who prefer to use women to satisfy their carnal lusts and then squirm and wiggle out of their most solemn duty, the duty again to protect and to provide for the children that they created. This lawful disenfranchisement of fathers is a social castration of manhood and a scourge on society. Abortion also dehumanizes the abortionist himself and all who defend his grisly trade. In his effort to dehumanize the child, the abortionist unwittingly dehumanizes himself. In his little booklet, Thoughts Upon the African Slave Trade, by John Newton, former slave trader and the author of perhaps our most beloved hymn, Amazing Grace, he describes the self-inflicted soul-eating effects of brutalizing other human beings for profit. Here's what he said, quote, now he's speaking of slavery, by the way, but you'll see quickly how this applies to our battle for life regarding abortion today. Quote, I know of no method of getting money, not even that of robbing for it upon the highway, which has so direct a tendency to efface the moral sense, to rob the heart of every gentle and humane disposition, and to harden it like steel against all impressions of sensibility. So too, to tear children from their mother's wombs is to efface the moral sense and to rob the heart of every gentle and humane disposition. Case in point, Late-term uh, abortionist Warren Hearn readily concedes that abortion is an act of destruction. Listen to his own words. Quote, we have reached a point in this particular technology where there is no possibility of denial of an act of destruction by the operator. It is before one's eyes. The sensations of dismemberment flow through the forceps like an electric current. End quote. The abortionist doesn't merely ravage his tiny victims. He unwittingly and inevitably ravages his own soul in the process. I love what Frederick Douglass, former slave uh, and abolitionist, said. He said, quote, no man can put a chain about the ankle of his fellow man without at last finding the other end fastened about his own neck. Abortion dehumanizes the abortionist himself. Abortion is evil because it unjustly ends the life of innocent children. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is beautiful because it provides forgiveness for guilty adults. I wanna speak with you now for just a few minutes about the grace of God for those who have had abortions. And I realize I'm speaking to some today who are watching this, that you have had an abortion or perhaps you have been responsible for an abortion decision. Let me say this, Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County exists in part to educate young parents about the evils of abortion, but they also exist to minister to those who regret their abortions. The Bible teaches that there is no sin that is so bad or so evil, including the sin of abortion, but that God's grace is not greater still. This is the message of hope that Patty and her team bring every day to young women and to young men in their center. Sadly, when it comes to speaking up for the unborn, much of the church has gone silent. There are many reasons for this, and frankly, none of them are good ones. But one reason is that many pastors believe that speaking out will only inflict greater injury on those who have had abortions. In reality, nothing inflicts greater injury than pulpit silence. When churches go silent on the subject of abortion, they communicate to those in their congregations who have had abortions or have been responsible for them, one of two messages, both regrettable. Either abortion's not so bad, or the gospel is not so good, or both. The counselors at Heartbeat of Lima are breaking this silence with the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 53, verse five, this is an Old Testament, Old Testament messianic prophecy given about 700 years before Christ came to an unwed mother 
as a, as a holy embryo. Isaiah, this comes through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, He, referring to Christ who again would come 700 years later, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him, and by His wounds we are healed. I love that verse. It is so hope-filled, and not just for those who have had abortions, but for all of us. Because as we often hear, the ground is even at the foot of the cross. If you've had an abortion, it doesn't take one more drop of God's grace to forgive you than any other person watching this tonight. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, Jesus now in the New Testament puts out this invitation, and it's an invitation to everyone. And he says this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He's not talking about physical rest. He's talking about spiritual rest from our own sin, whatever that sin might be. This is the hope of the gospel. If you have been wounded by abortion, if you will confess that to God the Father through Christ the Son, he promises to forgive you. In fact, this is what he said. Jesus himself said in John chapter 8, verse 36, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Why would we in our churches hide that message from those who have been hurt by abortions? If you've had an abortion, let me say one more thing to you. Jesus doesn't just promise you forgiveness. If that's all he did, if all he did was promise to forgive us of our sins, he would be worthy of our praise for all of eternity. But Jesus promises to do more than that. He promises to put us back together emotionally, to heal us, to restore us to kingdom ministry. How do I know that? Because Philippians 1 talks about the fact that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That is the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit that comes into, who comes into each one of us when we come to faith in Christ. Loving innocent children and guilty adults are not competing interests for the body of Christ. By speaking the truth in love, Patty and her team are doing both. And that brings me to the final point that I want to share with you this evening. I want to speak now for the remainder of my time about the power of your influence in Lima and Ottawa, Putnam County and beyond. The state-sanctioned murder of children by abortion each day in the United States is a moral monstrosity that demands a robust biblical response from us. Throughout history, whenever and wherever people have been oppressed or marginalized or targeted for death, Christians have become rescuers. There is a reason for this. It is because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the consummate rescuer. We stand on his shoulders when we reach out to those in need. And a fundamental question, a key question that every Christian in every church needs to wrestle with is simply simply this. Is our gospel for everyone, truly for everyone, or is it only for those who are conveniently loved and protected? Heartbeat of Lima is on the front lines meeting young mothers and young fathers in their most desperate hour. Young men and women who feel cornered by life's circumstances. They are also the last line of defense for their little ones, for the unborn whose lives oftentimes hang in the balance. Heartbeat of Lima is not an extension of the health department. And they are not merely a diaper dispensary. They are a rescue operation. The narrative that's pushed and peddled everywhere we look today is that you and I as pro-lifers are waging a war on women, that we're stealing reproductive rights from women, that we have a fetus fetish, that we care only about children until birth. We're not really pro-life, they tell us. We're only pro-birth. And once the baby's born, we don't care about the baby. We don't care about the mother. That's the, the narrative that's pushed and peddled. There's no truth to this. Even if this were true, however, this would do nothing to defeat our argument that abortion unjustly ends the life of an innocent human being. But the fact is, is that this is not true. We are the real friend of women and children, children both born and unborn. No one cares for moms and their little ones, again, born and unborn, like Patty and her team at Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County. Let me just do a little math with you very quickly here, and I want you to just follow the money with me. And let's see who the real friend of women and children in America is. You may not know this, but right now in the United States, there are about 400 surgical abortion clinics and about 300 chemical abortion clinics for a total of about 700 abortion clinics in the United States. 
Many of these are owned and operated by men for financial profit off of women who are in crisis. And these men are driving Lamborghinis and living in gated communities because they're making an awful lot of money this way. Contrast that now with the number of pregnancy centers like Heartbeat of Lima. Did you know that there are nearly 3,000 of these in the United States? Actually about 2,100 to 2,200, but many of them have three, four multiple centers as does Heartbeat. And that brings the number up to nearly 3,000. Most of these centers are run by women, for women, at absolutely no cost to women. There is no cash register anywhere at Heartbeat of Lima in the, either of their two locations because everything that they do is free. We are the real friends of women in crisis and of men and of their little ones. But Heartbeat needs your help now more than they have ever needed it, as Bob shared earlier. This pandemic has presented challenges for ministries like this that you can imagine, I'm sure. For 47 years, since Roe v. Wade, Heartbeat of Lima, this center, these two locations have stood like a beacon of light in this community as a voice for the voiceless, holding out the word of life to their young mothers. This ministry is a good investment. You heard the testimony tonight. You've seen this. You know of their work in this community. Pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, a baby boutique that you have to see. If you haven't seen their center, call them this week. Schedule an appointment. Come for a tour. You've got to see it. Post-abortion support groups, Bible studies, parenting classes, and on and on. I could go on. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing a work that needs to be done desperately, but they need your help. And I'm asking you tonight to dig deep, to sacrifice greatly, to do more than perhaps you thought you would do when you tuned in this evening. I'm asking you tonight to lift a burden from Patty and from her team so that they can be about the work that God has called them to over this next year. They're not first and foremost fundraisers. They're willing to do this work because they feel so strongly about the work that God has called them to do. To do. But this is not their first work as fundraising. And I'm asking you tonight, would you give sacrificially? Would you partner with them, really come alongside of them? Just a couple of notes about this. Every gift, big or small, is greatly appreciated by this ministry. And I, wanna, I really want to stress that. This is a team that's very grateful for your sacrifices, and they don't take that lightly or take that for granted. Some of you are already supporting this ministry on a regular monthly basis, and I want to challenge you to consider, would you up that support? Would you consider upping your support? Maybe you're watching tonight and you're thinking, boy, I, I'm not supporting it regularly, but I'd like to. Well, I'm going to in just a minute give you four ways again, um, four easy ways for you to give and to support this ministry. But would you consider supporting them on a regular basis? You know what it's like in your own home. Uh, you get a weekly or a bi-weekly paycheck, and you understand the importance of that as you budget for the, for the week or the month or even for the year. It's the same with a ministry like Heartbeat of Lima. So that would be a great help to them if you would consider that. One more word, and that is to pastors and um, missions department heads, chairmen of missions committees perhaps. If your church is not supporting this ministry in your annual budget, would you consider that? Would you go back to the powers to be in your church and ask them to partner with this ministry? Young moms and, their, and, and young husbands, or, or fathers, I'm sorry, and husbands in some cases, and their little ones are an unreached people group. This is a great mission for you to be a part of. So here's how you can give. Five easy ways for you to give. You can call TV44 at 419-339-4444. Again, volunteers are standing by right now to take your calls. You can text to 419-216-2526 and text in your um, message, give Lima, and then the dollar amount that you intend to uh, donate. A third way that you can give is to donate online, and you can do that at um, heartbeatoflima.org. That's heartbeatoflima.org. And then finally, you can mail in your donation to Heartbeat of Lima, and their mailing address is 3225 West Elm Street, and that's Lima, Ohio, 45805. In closing, before I turn this back over to Bob, I just want to thank each of you again for tuning in, and thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your support. Um, thank you for loving moms and their little ones. And thank you for loving Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County. God bless you. Bob?
you, Mike. Excellently done, as I'm sure you would all agree. We're nearing the conclusion of the program tonight, but I guess I would like to pass along one personal note, if I may. This organization, Heartbeat, is very instrumental, very important to me for one very specific reason. I am one of the millions of Americans who are considered by some to be disabled. I lost my vision at just under a year old to something called retina cancer. It is a cancer that was undiagnosed until after birth back in 1956, which was right about when fire was invented for you younger people. <laughs> but it is now a cancer that can be detected in the womb. So, at another time, with another set of parents, it is I that could have been the victim of abortion. So I guess that's why this organization is kind of important to me. Once again, I, uh, Mike has done an awesome job letting you know how you can donate this evening. Perhaps the easiest way is to wake the volunteers up out there outside the studio at 419-339-4444. Any donation, any pledge of any size would be very much appreciated. As we close this evening, I'd like to ask Pastor Herb Ford of the Cornerstone Church to close the program this evening as he has done each year in its 11-year history. Herb, you do something well once, you get to do it again. Herb? Thank you so much, everyone. You know, uh, that was excellent, Mike. That was excellent what you had to say. And also, uh, Bob, just hearing from him right there. You know, I'm always reminded uh, when we talk about these types of things. The Bible says that uh, in John 10 and 10, that the thief comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But I've come that you may have life and that life more abundantly. That's, that's a vibrant life. That's a life full of God's best. And tonight, I just want to encourage you that, to understand that though that was talking about you know, the God kind of life, it's still life. You know? And tonight, that's what we're celebrating. That's what we're trying to assist. And anytime we get the opportunity to sow in that type of ground, it's important. So we're going to pray and believe God for God's best uh, tonight. Father God, we thank you. The Lord across the airways, men, women are right now giving us, the, uh, giving us the ability to continue to do this work. Father, I pray right now that you're assisting those that are making a decision on how they wanna help, how they want to do something on the north, south, east, and west. We thank you for it. Father, we thank you for everyone that was here tonight, everybody that made um, a special uh, adjustment to be here. I thank you that your grace and your mercy is with them and that, Father God, all things are working together for their good. I pray tonight, the Lord, that we will see another year, another bonus year of people doing their best and doing more, Father God, so that we can get through not only this pandemic, but, Father God, we can continue to assist Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County. We we'll give you praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Herb. Thank you, Mike. Thanks to all of the individuals who are here today. Thanks to the Board of Directors, the Board of Trustees, rather, from uh, Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County. Our event is just about coming to a close, but the work of Heartbeat never, ever stops. The phone rings at all hours. Women at their desperate moments are welcomed at any, are, are continually welcomed and that is why this event is just so very important this is the annual fundraiser for heartbeat of lima it replaces their big event that's at the civic center so as we come to a close i ask that you would just like pastor herb prayed that you would be praying for more hearts to be open to donate and to give as mike said there is no dollar amount that the women have to pay when they come in for these services 
It is a true ministry. And in our time of COVID-19, the parenting services and the other things that they offer to these men and women are so, so very necessary. I'm gonna say goodbye to you in just a few moments, but I wanna let you know that our phone lines are still open, 419-339-4444. You can still go online to heartbeatoflima.org and click the donate button. You can still text to give, and let's say you don't have a chance to do it tonight, and you call us tomorrow here at TV44, and we will make sure the information gets to Heartbeat of Lima. For all of us here at TV44, for all of us at Heartbeat of Lima and Putnam County, I want to say thank you for joining us tonight for this special event. Continue to be praying for the funds to come in for Heartbeat of Lima, for the women whose lives are being changed, for the men whose lives are being changed, and for the babies who are being saved. God has a plan for every single one of those little babies. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great evening, everyone.